a senior lecturer at the Political Science Department of the University of Ghana, Dr. Agri Dako, says fighting corruption should go beyond naming and shaming corrupt individuals and institutions. He was reacting to President Buhari of Nigeria's intention to punish the names of corrupt Nigerians and prosecute them in order to check the Kanka and promote the economic well-being of Nigerians. Nigeria's president, Muhammadu Buhari, announced he will name looters of public funds in a speech he intends to deliver on May 29. He was quick to add such corrupt individuals will be prosecuted. Political scientist Dr. Agri Dako observed the one-fit-all solution does not help when it comes to dealing with corruption. He's of the view the name-and-shame approach by the Nigerian president is one of the ways to deter corrupt and potential corrupt individuals and institutions. You need to examine really the, the nature of corruption, who are the drivers and what did indeed the interventions that you want to put in place to address the problem. I don't think you just stop there. The fact that your name um, is out there as an individual engaged in corrupt activities will send some shivers down the spines of some individuals. Dr. Agridako indicated the effect of corruption is the same in both the public and the private sectors as it results in the misuse of scarce resources, which has a trickle effect. Major problems that we encounter with corruption is that it slows economic growth. It adversely affects capital accumulation. It lowers the quality of education or the public goods that would normally be uh, given by the state in the area of uh, health services, infrastructure, education, among others. Certainly, it reduces even the effectiveness of development aid. Um, and one major problem with corruption is that it increases income inequality. The political scientist urged Nigeria, as well as other African countries, to be interested in measures in fighting corruption. He suggested stiffer punishment and blocking avenues for corruption. We don't need to incentivize people who are corrupt and then we punish the wrongdoers and, and send strong signals to all and sundry that the nation is serious. It shouldn't just be the politicians. Political leaders must take the lead, but we must also look at official corruption, sometimes bureaucratic corruption. Dr. Agredako was quick to add that leaders should show a strong will while state institutions must be adequately resourced to fight the conquer. And the rector of the Kumasi Polytechnic, Professor Nicholas Nsoa Nwama, says the conversion of polytechnics into technical universities will not affect the technical education component of the system. He was reacting to a session by the Vice Chancellor of the University of Ghana, Professor Ernest Aite, that polytechnics will lose focus on technical education after the conversion. The Vice Chancellor of the University of Ghana, Professor Enes Aite, on an Accra based radio station, questioned the conversion of polytechnics into technical universities. He is reported to have said he would have strongly kicked against the move because of the type of education polytechnics provide. Professor Aite argues that polytechnic education is still relevant and very desirable for national development. He again said the role of technical skills is key to propelling the economy of any country. Director of Kumasi Polytechnic. Professor Nicholas Nsua Nyama, however, disagrees with him, stating the new system will strengthen technical education to make it more competitive. The fact that we, we are calling ourselves university, but that's why we are technical university, doesn't mean we are losing focus. They are still going to do the technical at a higher level, so that opportunities provided for the technical student, opportunities provided for even those who went to SH, uh, senior high school but would want to develop practical skills. We still will not lose uh, the technical nature of the education. He indicated polytechnics currently are unable to admit more students who study technical courses due to their structure. When you have taken all those who qualify to do engineering, the polytechnics still have enough places uh, that have to be uh, occupied. That is where the problem is. In fact, if we had the opportunity and we had a lot of these technical students and then the engineering students and the science students, we'd rather we'll go there. 
he explained with technical universities, HND will be pursued alongside degree programs which will give technical students more opportunities to undertake higher education in their fields of study instead of choosing non-related courses.